The head of City Express, the feature supplement of the New Indian Express Bangalore and a special correspondent for Express covering defense, aviation and investigation beats. He has started a very unique and inspiring initiative in City Express called Precious Souls, a dedicated series capturing stories of special children. Prior to this, he worked with the Aviation Week HAL as its official spokesperson and heading the corporate communication team, The Times of India, Bangalore, and Deccan Chronicle, Hyderabad. He has authored the bestseller biography of the Indian Paralympian, Amalti Hola, which is titled A Different Spirit. Currently, spearheading Inspired Indian Foundation, a writer's movement, to celebrate the success of unsung heroes, may I present to you Mr. Ananda Krishnan M. lunch session, a journalist needs to speak, especially after Aditya's performance. It's a great challenge, but I shall put my best foot forward. I have got 30 slides. I need to compress it in 15 minutes. That's why I call it as a supersonic presentation. So I'm going to speak on media's role. Oh, sorry. Uh, media's role in creating an inclusive India. I thank the organizers of IAS, uh, Feroz and his team, and the entire backroom boys of IAS for uh, this wonderful two-day event. Uh, so this August 2013, an idea took birth in the newsroom, and it took a firm shape on Independence Day. And we started something in, in City Express called Precious Souls. The idea behind this was to capture the stories of special children and their families. Some would be having some success stories like this, some might not, but then capture as many as stories as possible. And that was the initial idea. There's a story behind the logo. Uh, I come back. This logo is uh, done by a special child, uh, Divakar. He was my first candidate, I would say, in, in the Peshe Soul series. So on Independence Day in City Express, we started a very silent mission called Peshe Souls, and this was the first story of Divakar. Uh, until then, you know, I did not know much about, in the sense in detail, about what autism is all about and stuff like that. They, like just that I wrote about Malti Hola and uh, so not much of uh, knowledge in depth. So this was the first story, and uh, you know he paints his parents. Quickly to run through what he is all about, you know, uh, I must actually just mention this lady's name, Sajini Ganab, Agnana Deepan. She was the principal. She convinced the parents, and and then you know Divaga loves painting. Just a little bit of what the story is all about. And you know, I must tell you, first time in my life, I heard about something called MSUD. I know, like I'm not sure how many of you have heard about it. Maple syrup urine uh, disease, this is what he suffers from. And interestingly, you know, in the story, there's a mention about what his mother told me that. And it was a very special day for her when uh, Divaka called her Amma for the first time. And it was six months back this happened, and you know, she had to wait for many years to hear this. And for a mother, it was a very special day. So that was Divaka's story. Then we went on to capture the next story that was Sushmita. Uh, her name is Sushmita Dhalamalan. And that was our second story. And this is uh, the family. This is the template, I would say, of this particular series, family picture, then the story. So Sushmita, 34 years old, development and delays, and you know she went to SSK. And, some of the features about the story. Now she is employed at Saskin Technologies Limited and for the last 12 years as a library assistant. You know, some interesting facts about her. 
Her mother, Mala Dhananalan, tells me that systematic training and family support will definitely make a change in the lives of the differently able children. First, we have to accept the reality. I think the issue is here, which make okay, which might take some time. Most parents go through different levels of okay, okay, acceptance, and the earlier the better. So this was Sushmita's story, and after that, we went to Aditya, who performed here, and that's the first time I met him. This was probably uh, one month back, and then you know it was a huge family. We spoke to all of them in the picture: grandfather, grandmother, sister, mother, father. So this was this is Aditya's family, and oh, I think I skipped one slide. I need to go back. Okay, I think that's missing. So Aditya, of course, you saw him performing, a very talented kid. And then we, okay, this is Aditya's story, quickly in a nutshell. But let me just focus on what the mother said because throughout this journey, in the last two three months. I have realized it is the mothers who take the maximum hit. It is the mother's story which the media doesn't cover. It's the story, especially not just mother, but basically parents, but mother especially. So I have focused on what the mother told me. She told me that is uh, Vidya, who was here. Every night is a nightmare for me, even now, despite my son's increased abilities. Every morning I wake up with a new hope. The nights leave me with lots of disappointment, but I know one day I will succeed. I know I will. Some of the features of, you know, <laughs> what Aditya did, and you know, and again focusing on mother, Vidya learned music, swimming, horse riding, badminton. God knows everything for his son, because she need to learn first, then she could teach the son. So very interesting, very touching story there. And then we got Ragini. This was again the next one. This particular feature comes every Thursday in City Express, and it was on Children's Day. You know, it just coincided with the Children's Day, and uh, you know, it was again interesting. Mother, I'm just quickly running through because of lack of time. And this is her story. She's 12 years old. She told me a lot of things on, you know, on her my birthday. On her birthday, her mother bought her a pink salwar kurta, and she likes pink, pink shoes, stuff like that. Good storytelling and paintings, and she also told me about a piggy bank. She showed me that, and her mother Goba Bose tells me that moving in the darkness is one of the most worst traumas most families face. However, I was among the lucky few who had the right kind of people around. Every day is a new day, and I try to meet a new and a fresh like Ragini Des. Her, uh, the next slide. She likes pink shoes, oh. she, you know, everything pink. So that is her story. So we want to the next slide. Very interesting. After that, two weeks back, we featured this twin sisters. Uh, I forgot the names, Miss. Then the next slide. Um, this is, the, okay, this was it. Okay, Nandita Rao and uh, Sunita Rao. Very, uh, I think Smita Rao, yes. 37 years old. Very, very interesting story. You know, parent, father is around 80 and mother is around 70. And very, very talented kids, so spent a couple of hours with them, and uh, this is, in a nutshell, what they're all about. Her mother, their mother told me that, you know, it'll be a difficult for Nandita and Smita without us. Like every parent, we also live with the hope that they will become normal one day. They still have no clue that one day we will have to leave. So a bit of concern there, uh, aging parents. I'm sure most parents will have this concern. So. The next slide. Yeah. Uh, so that was a bit of it. I need to rush through. I've got another five minutes more. So that was about the twin sisters. And finally, last week, we featured Hari. Uh, Down syndrome. Uh, so this was Hari's story. Interesting, even he plays. So 
just for the people who want to follow this particular thing, we have a, uh, we, like we have a Facebook page called The Precious Souls. And uh, that's my number, that's my email ID. In case if you guys want to get in touch with any of the success stories, if you have, you know, since we have started a mission to capture the story, success stories and whatever of the special children and the families, you can write to me, ananta.akgmail.com and this ID. So <clears throat> whatever I spoke till now was the, the good side of the thing. Now the bad side, which as a journalist, quite often media is accused of not doing their role. I also believe that they are not doing their role, um, like most of the times. But you know, the kind of challenge as a journalist I have faced featuring these families in the last two, three months, I have just put down only few. Parents willing, <coughs> not coming forward to share the story. Once the photo is taken, then they'll call up and say, please don't use the photograph. <coughs> then they, there are requests saying that don't mention about the name of children if they have a normal sibling. Sometimes they say, if the father is working, please don't mention the designation. And of course, all the six stories were featured, all the parents said one thing, please show the story before it goes to the print. And you know, we journalists have tons of egos, so we don't actually show things. But then, you know, in this case, I had to, otherwise, you know, they said you can't print. So, so the stories were shown to them, they make corrections. I would say 95% of the things go as the way we planned, but then 5% either or other. There are in some cases, <coughs> we fix up the interview and just one hour before they say, you know, the son abroad says don't come and you know, it's not needed, all that stuff. So there is a willingness from the media, but there are, these are the issues what we have faced. Now, uh, if you ask me whether media, actually media can, can play, must play a bigger role in spreading awareness. And if you ask me whether they are playing the right role, if I say no, I lose the job. But they are playing to some extent, but then when it, maybe they'll cover events like this, but on a continuous basis, I don't think so media is playing a role. To capture the stories of special children, on a constant basis. Like once in a while, World Disability Day, some celebrity will come, some run, all that, yes. But then on a constant basis, highlighting the issues and all, I think definitely, no. And here is the thing, you know, parents must come out of the shell and share the success stories. It is quite, quite a very, very emotional journey for a journalist spending seven, eight, not seven, eight, sorry, three, four hours with the families, convincing them. And NGOs, I feel, must network better to spread the awareness. These kind of summits, I personally feel a constant follow-up is what that is required. And we must, we must, all of us must influence the government to bring in changes to help people with special needs. Informal online forum of parents must be there to share the strengths and weaknesses. See, I strongly feel, see, I run something like this Inspired Indian Foundation for the last five, six years, no publicity. Lot of quiet work being done. Lot of quiet work. The money I get from the sales of that Malti's book goes to this. But I very strongly felt that the poor, can they afford a horse ride? These therapies, can we make them at, at one by ten of the cost? I don't think so, it's happening. Employment opportunities. Speeches, all that is fine, but then we need solutions. Here, we should focus on the solution part. And there should be a national movement for the disabled, all the special children. And it's good to make some noise, but then more than that, the voices that will bring change. This is the key factor. There are hundreds of summits like this, great. But then, what happens after that? What happens tomorrow? So I think we must emphasize the change tomorrow, we should focus on this part. Uh, oh. What's happening? I go to the gym, but still. <laughs> okay. Interesting, and then this is one male. Okay, so what I, what I got from Aditya's mother after, you know, I'm not just trying to boast what I'm trying to do, but just, you know, 
it, this is all small awards what we get as writers. I know for almost two decades or more, I was covering missiles, submarines, you know, the fighter planes, and you name it. And for the last two months, I've been covering precious souls. And let me tell you, never has been such satisfying kind of response as a writer, the kind of feeling I got the last two months, what I failed to get probably the last so many so-called decades I boast of. So it is this kind of mail, I think, uh, you know, this I will preserve it forever. Because very touching mail when parents write this, you know. So again, feedback, I'm emphasizing on feedback. Uh, yeah, so I dedicate this presentation to all the mothers who are present here. You know, because uh, I've seen what the mothers go through. And I'm sure most of you will agree that in all of us, there's a special child. And it's the mothers, you know, who know they support them, you know, they support all of us, they support. Before I go to the last slide, I also have my entire City Express team here, the backroom boys. They are the other kind of precious souls for me. I also want to thank them because, you know, behind all these efforts, there is a teamwork. And uh, I'm here because of her, my late mother. And that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ananta. And I think I deserve to tell you the story. I did say this yesterday, but many of you were not here. How did I meet Ananta? And that's a, that's a story by itself. Um, I've been researching on a book that I'm writing. <clears throat> and uh, so one of the people whom I want to write about was uh, Malati Holla. And um, she'll be here for her session later in the next couple of hours. And uh, so first I said, let me do some research on Malati before I meet her. So I went, you know, as always, uh, technologist, I did a Google search. And then I found that there is a book written on Malati uh, called A Different Spirit. Um, so then I said, okay, the easiest thing to do is order a book. So I went to Flipkart, we all do that and said, okay, let me order a few copies of the book. And uh, it so happened that it was not available. It's out of print. Then I said, what can I do? So I just thought, let me look at who the author is. And then there was the email address of the author, Ananta Krishnan, blah, blah, and just shot a mail. And I said, you know, I, am, um, I, I know you've ri written about Malati. Before I meet her, I want to do some you know, groundwork and some reading up. And so I shot him a mail, um, and I forgot about it. I, no response. And I said, if you have a copy, uh, I would like to read it. Um, a month later, I don't know how much it was time gap, but maybe three or four weeks, uh, I saw in my office a cover uh, with a small message written on that, said, uh, which said, um, Dear Feroz, uh, this is the last copy of the third edition of Malti Hullah's book, A Different Spirit. Um, and since you asked for it, I part with my last copy. Um, so I sent it across to you, hope this is in safe hands. And I was thinking when I received it that you know, for an author who's written a book, how much it means to own the last copy. And he gave it away to me. And then I called him back and I said, for the last copy you gave, I will personally print the next edition. And I went ahead and printed a thousand copies. And that has now... That's become the India Inclusion Summit Special Edition of Malati Hullah's book, A Different Spirit. Malati herself did not know. We officially launched it yesterday with Kiran Bedi, Santosh Hegde, and many other uh, celebrities on stage. Um, thousand copies are there. You know, if you're interested, it's outside. You don't have to pay a penny. Just pick it up. It's such, an, uh, such a moving story. That's how I met Ananta as a person. And uh, so we went ahead, published the book, and then this became his mission as well. And that's what I said, the Inclusion Summit is not about a few of us here, but it's because everybody has contributed in some way or the other. In some senses, the whole precious souls thing was something that we discussed about and said, you know, this needs to be done. And I'm a very strong believer that media has a very, very strong role to play. And I haven't found too many journalists, with all due respects to all the journalists and media people here, who do it because, not because it's just a story, but it because it's a movement, it is something that can have a much, much bigger impact. 
So ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for Ananda Krishna. Yeah. Ananta, can you be on stage? We want to call Major D.P. Singh to felicitate. <laughs> and, and there's an interesting story about Major and Ananta. And let me tell you why I've got these two guys together. Major D.P. Singh um, had come to SAP for a session. And he wanted to buy a new blade. He was not able to run with the existing blade that he had for the marathon. And he wanted to have 10 lakh rupees to buy a blade. A single blade, what you saw him wear on stage, cost 10 lakh rupees. Or is it 10,000 dollars? Maybe I got it wrong. It's approximately that much. Dekh lenge. <laughs> 10 lakh rupees. And he said, uh, you know, I want to go to the US to buy my new blade. How can you help? So he came and his flight was one week. He has his flight tickets, but he doesn't have the money to buy the blades. And so he was at SAP a week before his, he was to take off on the flight to the US. And I said, Major Saab, how much money have you got? He said, 1.23 lakhs. I said, great, now you have 8 point some lakhs remaining and you have 5 days to go. How are you going to get the money to buy your blade? He said, you know, I'm doing a lot of cost cutting exercises. I said, what is that? You know, I don't need food because I'll stay in some Gurudwara in US. So I don't have to pay for that. I said, that's okay, but you need to travel around. He said, you know, I don't need to travel. I, I don't need to take any taxis. I'll just run to the place wherever I have to. So that's how he saved some money. Uh, and then I said, you know, we can't collect seven to eight lakhs just by donating through friends and families. The media has to do something. You wouldn't believe, I asked Ananta, can you write a story about this guy on New Indian Express? And he, of course, was a former defense journalist, so he understands what war veterans are all about. They're not former. Former. You're still a current war. Uh, <laughs> I thought you'd switch jobs. Anyway. Uh, and then he said, I will write a story. And so we did a conference call from my office to um, Major D.P. Singh and Ananta, and he carried a moving article on the New Indian Express. And then after three days, I asked uh, again, Major Saab, Kuch hua kya? I mean, did you get anything? And he said, you know what? Somebody in the US read the online article about Major D.P. Singh and donated 10,000 US dollars. Now that is the power of media. We had no clue how this money will come. You know, it's not come in times of India, with all due respects to New Indian Express. It's not the print one. It's come in the online article. What is the probability of somebody reading an online article of New Indian Express about Major D.P. Singh and opening up 10,000 US dollars? He was in US, he got his new blade. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, great. Uh, you give me this first. I'll tell you why. You give me this. <laughs> okay. I will uh, request, uh, I would want that shawl to be given to Aditya's mother. Please come. Please come, please come, please come. Because, you know, I think, yeah. I, Thank you.